right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to be picking up with our notes, our chapter three, free fall notes, and getting into the last little segment of this, which is in free fall graphing. Um, so we've just finished up the um, the, the fourth example in, in thrown objects, and we're into free fall graphing right now. So here we have a velocity versus time graph, and this should look familiar to you. Um, you're used to drawing velocity versus time graphs having straight lines that, that curve down and um, velocity over time, any change in velocity over change in time, delta V over delta T is going to be an acceleration. So the slope of this line right here is going to be our acceleration. And, uh, and this indicates that is if it's free fall graphing, hopefully you guys don't, sorry, hopefully you guys don't hear that racket and my dog's running around upstairs. Sorry about that. Um, this slope of this line will actually be um, negative 9.81. All right, so actually let me erase some of these scribbles right here that I just did. If I can, of course I can. I'm just going to have to do this. That, delete all that. Okay, um, so let's look, look at the region on the above graph where the object is moving upwards. Okay, where is it moving upwards? Now this line is going downwards the whole time, but... Um, that doesn't indicate the motion of the object. That simply indicates the velocity of the object. And so we're actually, we do have positive velocities at certain periods of time, all right? From here, in fact, I'll do this in green, all right? From here down to here, sorry, that last part got kind of wacky. The object is moving upwards. How do we know that? Because it has positive velocity all the way down to this point. All right? So it's moving upwards, and right at this point right here, it reaches the highest point. All right? That's the maximum height. How do we know that? Sorry, I skipped the second part. How do we know that? Well, it's got a velocity of zero. Velocity equals zero meters per second, so it must be at its highest point right there. Okay? And if the object is moving downwards or has a negative velocity, that means anything below this line right there, okay? So what's the object's initial velocity? Well, remember, the y value, it's the y value, is velocity here. So the initial velocity is right up here. It started at 25, initial velocity is 25 meters per second in, in the positive, okay? Of a free fall graph. So here we have position versus time. Now I realize that this looks kind of like a projectile path. Don't think of this as going up and then over and down. No, no. Instead, it is um, basically up and down, but just happening. It's going up and right back down, but it's happening over time. Now remember, time is on the x-axis right here. So it's really going straight up and straight back down in place, but since time is elapsing, that's why it looks stretched out right here. Okay? So, that being said, where is the object moving upwards? Well, this is a little bit easier to pi uh, picture because if we have a positive displacement, I should have made that green. I'll do that. We've got a positive displacement. All right, here, 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 still moving upwards, and that makes sense. Um, of course, here is our highest point right here. How do we know that? Well, it looks like the top of an arc, but also, um, oops, I'm going to try to erase that if I can. Oh, bugger, I can't. I can't erase that. Sorry, this thing acts funny sometimes. Um, just delete that, try that again. It looks like the top of the arc, but how do we know it's right at the very top is um, zero velocity? That is, it's the maximum or, or the highest position. Well, because the slope right there is zero. Slope equals zero. So you've got zero displacement over time, then that means it's come to a rest. So it's moving up to that point. Now it's moving down the second part of that right there. Okay, so the maximum height is that right there. So position versus time may be a little bit easier to visualize, especially if you think of an object going up and then coming back. So um, what is the position uh, equation, or what, or what equations can we use to describe an object's position? Well, this is one we've been using for a while. Our displacement equals, oops, our displacement in the y direction 
equals initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration, which is always going to be 9.8 meters per second squared times time squared. All right. Now we can break apart that um, that uh, that delta y into y final minus y initial, and then bring that y initial over to the other side right there. You can do that. That's perfectly fine as well. You'll notice that there is minus signs right here. I prefer to put the plus in and then make that gravity value negative. Just make sure you don't double up your um, um, your uh, uh, your negatives. That's all. All right. So this is a quadratic equation. We have the something something t squared times the something something t times something else. Well, that standard form is a, I'll, I'll, instead of x squared, I'll put t in. So a t squared plus b t plus c equals 0. Okay. Well, um, in this case, that a right there is going to be your 1 half g. Why? Because, well, there's a, um, there's a 1 half acceleration in there in front of the t. So that 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 a that that standard form um, quadratic the quadratic equation standard form a is negative one half g or you might say one half of accelerate uh, acceleration of gravity all right the b is going to be our initial velocity and c is going to be our y initial and if you have a position versus time graph it's always going to be a downward opening parabola why? Because this acceleration is negative. And so that acceleration of gravity all, is always going to make anything moving upwards negativer and negativer and negativer, as I oftentimes say. So it's always going to be a downwards opening parabola. And that's all due to the fact that we have a negative. Call that gravity. The velocity equation, very similar to our um, uh, Velocity versus time graph equation from um, 2D kinematics it is going to be our V final equals V initial minus GT. Again, I sometimes put a plus negative GT in there or, or negative AT. Um, again, it's, um, it's up to you. Just make sure you don't double up your, uh, your negatives. And you're always going to have a downward sloping line, very much like the first thing that I showed you when we got into this. All right, you're going to have a negative change in velocity over a change in time. That means we're going to have a negative acceleration, which is what gravity is. Okay. So a couple of interesting things to notice about the object, a motion of object in free fall. Um, the motion of the object sh it should be symmetrical around the object's maximum height. For example, if an object is, um, well, actually, I'll delete this right here. If it's shot up at a certain speed, it goes up to a maximum height, comes to rest right here, and then it comes back down. The initial velocity value and final velocity value should be the same, just negative. This is negative right here, and this one's, this one's positive, all right? But it's not going to come down faster than it was shot up. No, no, no. It's going to be symmetrical all around the object's maximum height. All right. Well, the slope is zero at the object's maximum height, so that right there is the slope, and that makes sense because the object is at a turning point going from positive to negative. Um, and so at any one given height, or sorry, at any one given height, the slope is going to be equal but opposite. For example, if we plot <coughs> um, position versus time, all right, position versus time right here, and it goes up like this. All right. This slope is going to be the positive version of that right there at the same height. That's what we mean when we say it's symmetrical all around that that highest that highest point right there. So you can assume that for any given height, like say right here, it's going to be the same velocity just negative um, because it's symmetrical uh, at equal heights. All right? Equal speed, not equal velocity. All right, equal velocity. That's not true because velocity is direction dependent. But equal speed, yeah, we can say that because speed doesn't care about direction. All right, so 10 meters per second going up, 10 meters per second going down, those are equal speeds. The velocities are just different. They are, and one is negative. All right, so the velocity will say 
right here is going to be a positive 24, 29.4 meters per second. Here it's going to be, when it hits the ground, a negative 29.4 meters per second. Here it's going to be a positive 19.6. Here it's a negative 19.6, and so forth. So um, this is the, the symmetricalness, symmetricity, whatever the word is, of objects that are in free fall, going up and coming back down to the same height. So uh, you're going to have a few questions on homework 3.3 that deal with this, and uh, I'll assign those to you. Look for those on Schoology, but the, hopefully this gives you a primer on how to solve them. And if you have any other questions on how to solve um, free fall graphing questions, please come see me or make sure you, uh, you contact me on Schoology. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.